Hi all, I'm back. Now this is the, um, let's see if any balls are falling off. Nope. So this is the um, one that I'm going to do in a abstract, not pouring, but just painting. And what I've done, I've mixed up some uh, paint. Uh, I'll get the color. This is the color. Let's get in close. That's it. I don't want to pronounce the name, but it's a sort of a burnt orange. So what I'm going for is really a transparent, and that's what it is. As you can see, it's pretty transparent. Sorry, got to get you back in focus. There you go. The thing is really driving me nuts lately. So what I'm going for is a very transparent uh, color, and it is, but I also want it in between all these little balls. And I'm going to come in with a, a little less transparent later, but more of a brown color. So this is going to be the underpainting, which is really warm, and that's what I want shining through. So I'm giving it a lot of paint. And really get, making sure I'm getting it in between those little bubbles. And as you can see, it's really tight, uh, tightly on there, all the, uh, all the little bubbles. It's like some sort of a massive thing that I'm painting. Of course, there might be one or two that are going to come off. You never know, but most of them are stuck on there for life. As you can see, I can just brush right over it. They stay put. There's my cup of coffee. Yells are really needed. Wow, it's hot. So we're getting right in there. Don't want to leave those little uh, specks. This one too. There's one that popped off. nice okay a little bit more up there doing the sides just a little bit Still like that. That's the right way up. Okay, this is the first. Um, this is the first little layer. Now what I'm coming in with is um, sort of the same. This is the same color, but the fluid. So I'm going to shake it up. 
and it's um, it's a lot darker because I'm not going to dilute it. Okay, that's nice. I like, I really like what it's doing here. The, uh, the flow of these little bubbles, that's really, uh, really up my alley. I really like that. Okay, that's uh, good to go. Now I want a little sponge. Just to push it in just a little bit more. here and there. That's it. And then I'm going to come in with a color. And this is going to be uh, the first underpainting of the color. Got to be careful because, you know, when you mix up those two colors together, it's going to get really muddy, so you don't want to have that. But what we're going to do is blend it in the background a little bit. Okay, and remember this is just the first part because uh, building up one of these uh, abstracts, you know, involves a lot of layers and a lot of colors. But I'm because even here there's going to be more color. I can do that right now. Let's see. Because this is going to be the uh, primary color of the uh, of the painting, you know, the like the background color. But then we're going to come in with a lot of coppers and gold and all sorts of nice metallic stuff. And because there's st structure on the um, on the uh, canvas. I'm not sure if you can pick it up, but there's a lot of structure because of the uh, gel medium I used. When I have the good colors going on, then I wipe over it again with one of those really transparent ones. Um, it'll leave a little mark and I'll, I'll just, with a damp cloth, you can wash away the rest, but it'll leave like little shadows on these structures that are on the, uh, on the surface. But this is going to take a while, so um, I'm going to let this one dry and um, I'm going to show you the other one. I'll get that one. This is the one I poured yesterday with the uh, bubbles all in it. It's, uh, it's 
well almost dry I can I can still feel a little bit of moisture here in the middle on the back but on top it's dry and if I were to come in with uh, right now with some color let me get you the, let me get this one off here oops Like if I were to um, do the uh, turquoise, I would put it in a sponge like this and then just come over the top. That already makes it look really, uh, really nice. Okay, that's about it. This is going to dry really fast. And I, you still see all the glitter. I'm not sure if you can pick up the glitter. Yeah, a little bit. See that? And um, I'm going to come in with a little bit darker uh, turquoise yet. to um, With a little brush. Because we want to, of course, we want to create some sort of a, um, a depth in the uh, painting. So I, what I would do is, you know, come in here and all these little crevices, I'd give them a little bit of color. I wish this thing would stay on the table and not make so much noise. Just like this. See how that brings it up? And I've only done one side. But it already brings it up from the uh, canvas. And I'm not really liking this color much, so I might just mix it a little bit. Yeah, I'll just make a, a real dark turquoise that'll look a lot better, especially on this green background here. That's it. I'm gonna see, oops, I forgot to shake. See, that's what happens. Do you see this here? That's when you don't shake your uh, fluids. You really have to shake it. Never forget, because if you do, at the end you won't have any of that other stuff left. And you'll just have that paint stuff. Giving it a little bit more of a depth thing. Whoops. Don't want to get the brown in yet. Okay, that's looking cool. Now, when it's um, when I'm I'm finished with all the layers I'm going to be putting on here, and I'll be doing the, them online uh, in the next video, I will uh, really bring this up off the canvas. Then, when it's dry, I'm going to come in with that. Um, oh, I wish I knew how you called it. I I think it's called Inca Gold. So you can you can buff it, and I have a couple of colors. Just have to go find some. And someone already said, you know, what would be really nice would be uh, the uh, primary elements. But I want to just put metallic colors on it, you know, not the mica colors, but metallics. Because I think this painting really needs it with all the blues and the greens. I think the copper would look fantastic. And uh, I might even do a little embossing on it. Yeah, that might be a nice idea if I did something over here and there with a little bit of embossing powder. But I'll I'll test it out on a on a old canvas first. 
You never know how that's going to work, right? Let's test. Here we have a, let's put that away. Here I have a, oh, but I really like this little canvas. But it doesn't matter. We can test it anyway. So this is a copper embossing powder. And what I'd like is, let's see where we put it. Somewhere around here. Okay. That's it. That's what I'd like. Maybe two, but I can do the first one now. have to do it with the, the uh, glue first. Doesn't matter because that way I can do both of them together. Maybe even three. That'll look nice. And I want them a little broad and a little wide and a little narrow. That's it. Okay. Put this stuff back on. Should have took a piece of paper. There we go. Ooh, that's gonna be cool. Look at that. Okay, got it off. Let's see what happens. I think it's taking way too long. Let me get my little burn thing. That's better. Look at it. That goes a whole lot faster on canvas. Of 
course we have to uh, let it dry a little or cool down a little but that does give it something uh, something special and I think it'll go really well with that um, this painting because of the structure things you're uh, I'm doing I think it'll go nicely with this so uh, we'll just let this one dry first and then um, we'll come back in with some uh, some other colors and I might even put try down here this bit here put some uh, glue on these little 3d balls and then put some embossing powder on top that might give it a really different look you know all those little holes if you can see it up close see that So I'm imagining if I put that on these uh, little balls here, get in focus please, yep. If I put that on the little balls here, then it'll give it, you know, even more of a stone effect. So that might be really cool. Okay guys, I'll put that away, let it dry. And when I come back, I'll have all my paints mixed for the pour on, where's that thing? Oh. Oh, there it is. This one, we're going to pour right over it. Then we've had, you know, a lot of uh, ways to use these little 3D balls. Um, let's see. Nope, nothing coming off. There, it's nice and solid. So I'll just be pouring right on top. I think I'll pour from up to down here down. Then I'm hoping it'll, yeah, I think I'll have to tilt it a little bit. But I would like for this to be um, negative space. What do you guys think? You can tell me because before I'm ready with mixing paint, you'll have seen this video. So do you think I should leave this negative space here, this here and there and there are the corners and then have the paint come over here and go down the sides here, go down the sides there, go over, go over. Let me know what you think. If enough people say what they like, I'll do it, okay? Because I'm thinking if I pour the whole thing with um, paint and then, you know, come in with the torch. Or maybe I can pour the whole thing and only torch this bit. So then this would be without the um, the cells that are created with the uh, torch. There go two bubbles. Then um, only this will be torched. Or the other way around. <laughs> we have too many choices pour the whole thing and then only torch the outsides and not torch this I'm not sure let me know what you think I'm open for all suggestions at the moment because I don't have a clue okay guys thanks love you all to pieces leave see you in the next video